let's continue to read in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 in the King James Version. <clears throat> Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass, because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways, ways are judgment, a God of truth, and without iniquity, just and right is he. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath bought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will shew thee, thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land, and in the waste howling wilderness, he led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttering, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields, and he made him this to suck honey out of the rock, and oil out of the flinty rock, butter of kine, and milk of sheep, with fat of lambs, and rams of the breed of Bashan, and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat, and thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape, but Jeshurun waxed fat, and kicked, thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers fear not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. For a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will spend mine arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. The sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of gray hairs. I said I would scatter them unto, or into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. 
for they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up? For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom, and of the fields of Gomorrah, their grapes are grapes of gall, their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasuries? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings? Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, and I make alive. I wound, and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword and mine hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh, and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. And Moses came and spake all the words of this song in the ears of the people, he and Hosea, the son of Nun, or Hoshea, the son of Nun. And Moses made an end of speaking all these words to all Israel. And he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to observe, to do all the words of this law. For it is not in vain... For it is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life. And through this thing ye shall prolong your days in the land, whether ye go over Jordan to possess it. And the Lord spake unto Moses that selfsame day, saying, Get thee up into this mountain, Abr Abram, unto Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Jericho. And behold, the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel for a possession, and die in the mount whither thou goest up, and be gathered unto thy people, as Aaron thy brother died in Mount Or, and was gathered unto his people, because ye trespassed against me among the children of Israel at the waters of Meribah Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin, because ye sanctified me not in the midst of the children of Israel. Yet... Thou shalt see the land before thee, but thou shalt not go thither unto the land which I give the children of Israel. Okay, a lot. <laughs> Again, huge amount. Remember, that's true. Moses got angry because the people were continuing to, continuing to rebel against the Lord and cause him just, just, they were complaining to him and threatening him. And so, he went to the Lord and complained, and then the Lord told him what to do. He told him to speak to the rock, and water would come out. But he went back to the crowd, and they were angry, and he was angry, and his thoughts and feelings showed up. He struck the rock instead of speaking to it. And water still came out of the rock, but consequences. So, 
He's still allowing for Moses to see the promised land. Unfortunately, he can't. He will not cross the Jordan to go into it. On to point one of verse 32. Verse six. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath bought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Bringing past to present immediately. Range exactly true to this day. <laughs> he bought these. He bought all of us with his son. And that is what he's talking about even here. He's talking about, I redeemed you. I have forgiven you. All you are to do to be righteous in my eye is to believe in my son, who is Christ, who fulfilled the law, who fulfilled everything for us, so that when he sees us, he sees also his son who died for us. So we are justified and we, and we are redeemed for eternity and we are can live with him at just as righteous and as holy, a holy nation, a holy people in his kingdom. And that's what he is telling us. And that's what he wanted for us. Is not he thy father? Yes, he's our father that hath bought thee. He has bought us with the blood of his son. Hath he not made thee? Absolutely, each and every one of us. We are not here. We would not be here if he had not created us and he not created thee and he not created all of this including that <laughs> including the air including the water including the sun including the stars and the moon including the land including the sea including everything that you could see or think of the lord created for us and established thee we are established. Think about that. And think about what that means to you. What does establish mean to you? So that's the question for you. Bring you to the Holy Spirit speaking, giving the Lord praise and glory and praying to him. Think about that for yourself. Write that down. What does establish mean to you? To be established. He established thee. So, again, bringing past to present, we can see that these things are true and correct even from the Old Testament. And the Old Testament ties into the New Testament ever so much. Before we go on to point number two, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? 